Hello everybody, Kwip here, and welcome to another Destiny 2 video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the remaining issues in the Crucible after the Crucible changes that came with the Forsaken update. Because although I think it was a big improvement over PvP previously, there are still a lot of issues that remain, and a lot of issues that were created by the changes themselves. And so what I see as the core issues remaining in the Crucible that need to be fixed, the big problems, I'd say that they revolve around the strength of supers in this game, the balancing of special weapons, the return of easy one-hit abilities, and the variety and sustainability so of the game. So to start off by talking about supers, I think that they are a massive issue in the Crucible right now. It feels like a lot of games can come down to whoever is using the best supers and whoever gets like 5 kills apiece with them, which really isn't much of an abnormality in this game. Supers like Nova Warp, Sunbreaker, Sentinel, Arcstaff, they're all extremely strong due to several factors. Number one, the damage resistance in this game is far too significant. While in super, you often take a third of the damage that you would normally take. Compared to in Destiny 1, it was just about always like one half the damage for roaming supers, and that was when special weapons did more damage than they do in Destiny 2. And so you're taking less damage in your super than you did in Destiny 1. Also, there's the factor that you are probably faster in this game in most of your supers than you were in Destiny 1, because the movement abilities can be really great. Like, if you take a look at Nova Warp, you can blink infinitely with that thing and cover so much ground very quickly. Whereas with like the standard Stormcaller in Destiny 1 and also in this game, you get a blink every couple seconds and there's actually a cooldown so you're not incredibly fast. However, you can still make up ground on people. And another thing about these roaming supers, a lot of them actually have ways of like completely nullifying damage. For example, Sentinel can block to the point where they take absolutely zero damage and Arc Staff also has the capability of doing the same thing. Supers are already astoundingly difficult to kill in this game so the fact that you can be practically invincible in a lot of them, and some of the strongest ones in the game is really concerning in my eyes. And then another thing about a lot of these roaming supers is that they last very, very long. It happens every couple games where I'll die two separate times to the same exact super, especially with Nova Warp or maybe something like Arc Strider or Sunbreaker. It's really not that unfrequent to be killed twice by the same super, which is unbelievably frustrating. And that's due to the fact that a lot of these roaming supers can last so long. And so the overall strength of supers and how powerful they are is too much in my opinion. What I would do is I would make it so any roaming supers does not have any more resistance than one half of the damage that they're taking in. And I would have the length of just about all roaming supers reduced. I'd say it's probably necessary on all roaming supers for titans and warlocks, and then probably arc staff on the hunters, but golden gun and night stalker, I don't really see it to be necessary. Those two aren't super strong right now, and I feel like their timers are mostly appropriate. And then another thing that I think needs to be changed with the supers is how they're compounded and how everyone gets their super at about the same time. It's not uncommon to have three or four super deaths in a row while a team uses six supers in a span of a bit over a minute. And this is just another aspect of the game that is just really unpleasant, but it's something that happens in just about every game. And a lot of this might be due to kind of the orb system. And so to fix this, they might have to do away with orbs because if there is someone on team that is actually playing at a higher level than everyone else and they actually get their super right away and they create some orbs then it just allows their teammates who maybe weren't picking up any slack to get their super so they can continue the chain of supering each other and making more orbs. So yeah, to fix this I think they might have to eliminate orbs from PvP or at least make them less significant. And also I think it would be helpful to make getting your super a bit more kill oriented so you make more progress towards getting your super from getting kills rather than just time played. And this will make it so people get their supers at varying times in the game a bit more. So it doesn't feel like there's portions of the game where every person on the map is just using their super. And if you're paying attention to the gameplay in the background, I joined this game late and was in it for like about 40 seconds. And got all the way up to 80% super after picking up maybe like one kill, but several orbs. And that's just kind of an example of how absurd the orb system can kind of work in PvP. Now I'm going to be speaking a bit about the 
special weapon system here in Forsaken because even though, again, it was an improvement from before Forsaken, it has created its own issues and isn't perfect yet either. One of the primary issues that I actually already identified about the ammo system is that it doesn't have the greatest potential for getting clips and highlight plays. Sure, you're spawning with ammo every single life and you have ammo around you, but it's typically only two bullets, which you can't do anything super cool with two bullets. So if the opportunity does arise for a clip, there's a bunch of people grouped up together, you're gonna not have the ammo to capitalize as much as you would in like Destiny 1. And so what you get with this system compared to the old system is that special weapons are just about always around, but they're not always around to do something special with. And by that, I mean you're not getting three or four kills when the opportunity arises because you have to reload your special weapon or you just didn't have the ammo. But it also means that every single time that you fight someone, they've probably got some shotgun ammo on them. And that's something that is also pretty messed up with the special ammo system right now, and that is that it is very advantageous to be using a shotgun. Because to be picking up those shotgun kills, you gotta be very close to your enemies. And so once you get that kill, you can get their ammo very very easily. With snipers, you're trying to stay farther away and you might not be able to pick up the special ammo of the people you kill. So generally, you're going to be carrying much more ammo when you're using a shotgun in comparison to a sniper or a fusion, but with fusions you're generally pretty close as well, so there's not as much variation there, you're kind of in between snipers and shotguns for how much ammo you get. But there's very few people using fusions in the Crucible at all right now. Also with shotguns, you just reload one bullet at a time compared to a sniper or a fusion rifle where you reload an entire clip. So you're going to be reloading faster generally with the shotguns as you only pick up one or two bullets. And so as far as the ammo system works, it's definitely favoring shotguns right now and is a little light on the exciting play and clip potential compared to older ammo systems. Now to look at the actual balancing of special weapons, that's not working right either. I'd say the primary issue with the special ammo balancing right now has got to be full auto shotguns. There are so many full auto shotguns in the Crucible and it is the least skillful way to play in this game. It is really not challenging to hit people in close range with a shotgun and when you have the opportunity to spray out multiple shots extremely quickly, then there's really just no challenge to it whatsoever. And the one thing that was supposed to be somewhat punishing about shotguns when you're in close range is that if you do miss your shot, you're probably screwed. They probably put some damage into you and can just melee you or something like that. But now you don't even have to be accurate when you're flying in there. You can just kind of spray and pray and usually you'll come out on top. There isn't really any punishment for using a full auto shotgun and you can actually get full auto on most of the shotguns in the game now. Including like the Dust Rock Blues and the Retold Tail, which are like the highest impact and range shotguns in the game. So I think there needs to be some serious detractions to full auto shotguns in PvP. PvE, I'm perfectly fine with them, I really enjoy them. But they're just far too forgiving in PvP and really, really dampen the skill gap. Then when it comes to fusion rifles, overall they're all kind of underperforming a little bit. I think they could use a little bit of a damage buff, because compared to D1 levels they all have a little bit less damage than they used to. So it'd be nice to see some damage levels increase with fusions, as well as just a bit more variety of them. There isn't a ton of fusion rifles in the game right now. So yeah, it'd be nice to see a bit more of them. And then finally with snipers, you're not seeing a lot of them either, and that's because there's a lot of flinch in this game. And I'm not calling for like a huge decrease on that, I think that there should be a little less flinch in this game. And one of the reasons you want less flinch in a game as it pertains to sniping is that it will promote better types of sniping. When there's a lot of flinch, you need to hit that first shot or else you're not going to land any shot. So what that will promote is people hard scoping around corners, never coming out of their scope, which makes for something that's pretty unpleasant as a player as it's really quite boring just staring down a lane. And it's frustrating as an opponent getting one shot as you turn around a corner by someone who's been looking in the same place for a long time. So if you increase handling speeds Dude, and decrease flinch, then that will promote people to kind of try to quick scope a bit more or at least not stay in their scope as long. And also, more people will probably just start sniping in general, which would be good for the variety of the game. And then there's some other issues with snipers in this game. They also have generally lower damage than in Destiny 1 as well, as it's pretty hard to come by a sniper that can actually one 
one-shot any roaming supers, and there's a decent amount that don't even double body in this game. And it really doesn't make much sense for the damage to be so low on snipers in general, because it's actually not too helpful to body shot in this game in comparison to Destiny 1. Because in Destiny 1, a common strategy was to hit a quick body shot with your sniper, then instantly switch to a primary and finish them off. That's something that's done less in Destiny 2 because handling speeds are a bit lower and it takes longer to switch weapons, so that quick swap isn't as effective, especially because you're doing less damage on that original body as well. So I'd like to see damage increases on the snipers, it would be nice to see a bump to handling too, and I think it would be beneficial to tone down flinch a bit. But moving on to my next point, which is to talk a little bit about one-hit kill abilities, and in this game right now that comes in the form of the handheld supernova and shoulder charge. And both of these abilities are not difficult to use in the slightest and are very consistent one-hit kills. Something that instant kills that is not hard to use is not what we need to be unbelievably present in this game. And that's what it is right now. There are so many people running around shoulder charging. For those people that use Nova Warp, this handheld supernova is a guaranteed kill in many, many situations. And you don't have to struggle or try very much to do either of these things. But if you look over at the Hunters with Blade Barrage, if they throw their triple knives and hit three straight headshots, they're only going to do like 150 damage on a very large spread of knives. So it's weird that these one-hit abilities come in forms that are really not hard to use, and then the damage is so pale in comparison when precision is actually a factor. So I think these one-hit abilities are a problem and something that's probably going to need to go, and I think a lot of looks should be taken into class balance and see how things actually interact with each other and see if they make sense. And another quick thing about shoulder charge, because I never really complained about it in Destiny 1, but I think that it is really bad in this game, as in that it is really good and a bit of a problem in the game, because it's got some surprisingly incredible range in this game, and the registration and aim assist is quite crazy. The Titan can completely run past you and activate his shoulder charge, and it will like spin around his hammer to hit you. You can be on their sides, and it will kind of suck you in to hit them. So the aim assist and registration on shoulder charge is a bit crazy in my opinion. And it's a lot stronger than I would like right now, especially because you can damage multiple opponents as well And there's all of these exotics that pair extremely well with it And as you'll see here, I shoulder charged like two people in the span of five seconds, which is pretty insane So yeah, that's another bit of a problem that I have there now I'm gonna move on to my next point okay, which is variety so which the game is lacking quite a bit right now Because the lack of variety is what makes games stale when you're doing the same thing over and over again And nothing is very different. That's when you get bored. And Destiny players have a tendency to really kind of look away from variety, even though there is so many different guns in this game and so many different classes to play. People typically just go with what's best, and you can't really blame people for doing that too much. It makes sense if you want to do well, and you're trying to have a good time, and that's hard to do if you're just getting destroyed by things that are better than you, then that's completely understandable. But over the long run, that's going to become very boring. So what you need is actually a vast amount of weapons that are in similar power compared to each other. But that's not really what we have right now because, as I said, shotguns are unbelievably prevalent, whereas fusions and snipers aren't used a whole lot. Then when it comes to primaries, you don't see a lot of scout rifles, you don't see a lot of auto rifles, submachine guns, not many sidearms. It's mostly just hand cannons and pulse rifles. And if you look a bit more specifically, it's specific hand cannons and pulse rifles. You see Bygones, Redrixes, and the Luna's Howl. Or if not mostly, you're gonna see a large amount of people using these things. And that's because Bungie has really, for a long time, been in the habit of making a few weapons just far superior to the vast majority of them. And the perfect example right now is Luna's Howl. It's got a time to kill that no primary is going to match. If you want to do well, if you want to do the best, that's the gun you should use. And so when people take that mentality and they are using the Luna's Howl, then they're just destroying people that they come across. And when you die to that, it gets pretty frustrating. If you have the Luna's Howl, then you decide, okay, then I'm just going to use mine. Because I don't want to be in an inherent disadvantage, so I guess I'll be forced to use this weapon. Or just willingly make myself do worse and be mad about that. And then if you don't have the Luna's Howl, then you're just going to be pissed off and think that the game is broken and not fun to play. 
So no one's really winning in this situation except for the person that really genuinely wants to use the Luna's Howl at this moment. Which I'm sure there's people out there, but that probably isn't super sustainable that you want to only use this gun and don't want to try anything else. So I think Bungie really needs to become a lot more careful with making things so powerful and to the point where they just can't be matched by most of the other weapons in the game. I think there can be abilities that reward certain aspects of people's play or reward skill. And I I've actually been calling for rewards for people that can do incredible things in the Crucible for a while, but to make it substantially better than everything else and just making it so other weapons can't compete is just not a good strategy. And it's going to dampen the variance in the game significantly. Destiny is a special game because of its variety. There's all these different weapons that can all get different roles and have different perk combinations, which is a pretty special and incredible thing. But if there's a couple guns that are just far superior to everything, then those different variants of guns will never be used and they will never have a purpose and they will just lose a ton of value that the game potentially would have had. So if I were Bungie, I would spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to make an accurate balance with things and just stop deliberately making things way better than everything else. That's just a horrible decision from a balancing standpoint. Now final thing to talk about a bit is sustainability which variety definitely plays a big part in because you need something that keeps players coming back and just keeps the game interesting and keeping variety in the game will do that to some extent but you also kind of need a competitive outlet or something for players to strive for or look forward to. And I would say the competitive playlist is certainly not that right now. I don't know many people that care about their competitive rank too much, and it's not something that means very much at all unless you're using your competitive rank to try to get like a Luna's Howl or something. So they gotta find a way to make the ranking system seem a bit more important. Or the other thing that they can introduce is just to bring back trials in what I would say is kind of the original Destiny 1 fashion would be the best way to do it. I would say they should do 3-on-3. Three three. If they end up doing 4-on-4, four four, that's fine. But I'd say the normal elimination game mode style, where you can really have a bunch of hero moments. It's just a really smooth play style that players that enjoyed Destiny Trials originally will gel with and be happy to return to. And I think having Trials that weekly, competitive but rewarding environment would be an extremely beneficial thing for the game. And that's what I'm going to end this video on. Those are my thoughts on the main things that are lacking in the Crucible right now and what need to be tuned and fixed up. There's definitely some other small issues that need to be addressed, but I try to cover most of the large things that I could by going in depth and trying to offer some solutions to them if I could. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and see you later.